Hello, welcome to Board with Paint. Today I'll be showing you how to paint Losa from Divinity Original Sin the Board Game. If this is your first time painting, I advise you to check out episode 0, where I show you all the equipment you'll need, along with how to prime and prepare the miniature. If you're still with me, let's jump right in. We'll start off with cadmium skin, and use this to paint all of the exposed areas of flesh, including her face, upper part of her chest, shoulders, hands, and her upper legs. We'll also use this to provide an undercoat on her hair, even though this won't be close to the final color. Next, we'll paint the corset with Beastie Brown. For her dress, we'll mix up sort of a purplish blue tone by mixing some brown and blue together and then adding a bit of bloody red followed by some warlord purple. We'll apply this over her entire dress. Next, we'll put a base coat on her hair by mixing some brown and red together and then adding a touch of cadmium skin to lighten it. Losa's hair is pretty red, so we want this to be a very reddish brown. And we'll apply this over all of the hair. Next, we'll paint the face of the loot by mixing some bone white and beastie brown. For the back of the body and the back of the neck of the loot, We'll mix some brown and black together to go with sort of a dark brown. There's some bits of fabric hanging from her belt area. I decided to paint those using a mixture of stonewall gray and black. Thank you. 
We'll also paint her leg wraps with this. My intention was to allow some skin to show here, but I had some trouble figuring out what was skin and what was wrapping, so I ended up painting the entire thing. We'll go back and fix this later. For the embellishments on her dress, I'm using pure bloody red. This includes her arm wraps and a stripe that I'm painting red along the back bottom part of her dress. I'm also painting the flared part in the front of her dress with this. For the rock she's standing on, we'll do a base coat of Stonewall Gray. And then for the white streaks in the hair, we'll darken some Stonewall Gray with some black and use that for a base coat. I'm using some pictures I found online as a guide to where this should go, and I'm also including the strand of hair that comes down over her face but feel free to put in as much or as little as you want. Once everything is dry, we'll apply a coat of flesh wash over all of the skin. Just as in previous videos, we want this to go on somewhat thick and allow it to pool in the recesses. I also decided to shade the hair with this color as well. Now we'll use black wash to cover anything that's black or gray on the miniature. This will include the rock, the pieces of fabric hanging from her belt, and the boots. Now I'll mix a custom wash to shade her dress, starting with some black wash and adding a drop or two of Warlord Purple and a few drops of water. Give this a good stir with a brush and check that you have a nice dark transparent purple. And now we'll go and apply this over all the blue areas of the dress. Once you've applied the washes, make sure you've allowed them to dry completely before adding any more paint. Next, I'm going in and picking out areas of skin that are showing through the wraps on the legs. I still couldn't really tell what was supposed to be skin, so I just did my best. And here's a look at what I decided to paint as skin. Next, I returned to the black wash and covered all of the brown leather bits with this. I'm also using this to fill in the sound holes of the loot. There's the large hole in the middle, and there appears to be another one under her hand.
Then I'm just using this to add a dark line between the neck and the body of the instrument. Now I'm returning to the flesh wash and applying this over the areas of skin we painted on the lower legs. I'll paint the base in the same way I painted the other ones in this series, starting by filling in the recesses around the outside of the base with white. And while we have the white out, we'll get a little on a brush and wipe it off and do a dry brush on the rock. You can check out the previous videos for more on dry brushing. Now we'll hit anything metal with chainmail. This includes her main belt and some jewelry that appears to be hanging down over her dress and on her legs. I'm also using the chainmail to paint the tuning pegs and the little metal things sticking off the bottom of the loop. Next, we'll start highlighting some of the areas, starting with those dark gray portions. And for this, we're just mixing a slightly lighter color of gray than we did for the base color. And we'll paint this over all the raised portions of the wrappings on her legs. And here I'm hitting those upturned surfaces of the fabric that's hanging from her belt. I'm paying special attention to the edges and the area where it curves downward. Now we'll mix in some more gray and repeat this process. We'll hit those wraps again on the legs. This time we'll cover slightly less area. We want to keep our highlights within the highlights we did in the last step. And we'll repeat this one last time after mixing in a little more stonewall gray. Now we'll apply some highlights to the dress using a mixture of magic blue and warlord purple. I'd say this is about three to one blue to purple. And now we'll go around her dress and just hit the upturned folds, staying out of the deepest recesses.
Now we'll lighten this by adding a little bit of white and applying the highlight again, covering just the higher portions of the folds. For the frill around her shoulders, I want to go really light on this, so I'm adding in a bunch more white and just hitting that area right below her shoulders. Now to bring all the highlights together, we're going to apply glaze, which involves watering down some of the blue so it's about the consistency you saw on the screen there. And we're going to brush this over the entire dress. Anything that is blue, anything we highlighted. This will help obscure the layers and bring everything together. We don't want this to work quite like a wash. You want to prevent it from pooling. So if it starts to pool, try to suck it up with your brush. Now we'll highlight her leather bracers and her corset using Beastie Brown. To boost the highlights a bit, I'm mixing in a little bit of sun yellow and then we'll hit these areas again. To highlight the red parts of her dress, I'm just lightening the red with a little bit of sun yellow and applying that over the raised areas. For the red trim around the bottom of the dress, I'm just hitting where the folds are sticking out. We can keep it darker in the recesses. Now we'll apply a second highlight to those areas by mixing in a little more yellow and adding a little bit of dead white. This should give us kind of a salmon colored tone. If you're looking for a more vibrant red, you can leave out the white and just add more yellow. But be careful you don't go into orange. I'm highlighting the front of the neck of the lute with bone white. And then for the rest of the front of the instrument, I'm mixing bone white, beastie brown, and sun yellow to try to get this pale brown. And we'll use this to highlight the face of the instrument. Now we'll move on to Losa's hair. The base coat that's already on there, we want to kind of act as the shadow. So everything else will be highlights. We're starting off with some pure bloody red and applying this over any of the areas that are sort of facing up towards the sky. We're not following individual strands of the sculpt at this point yet though. Now we'll add some sun yellow to get a bit of a highlight there and continue this process, hitting some of those same areas.
and we'll repeat this process a few times, each time adding a little more sun yellow. Here I'm starting to add a little white into the mix to brighten it up. Now I'm starting to try to follow the sculpt a little bit, but still staying to those areas that are facing upwards. Now it's just a matter of going back and forth with some of the colors we've been using and darkening it where it looks like it needs to be dark and lightening it where it needs to be light. It can be helpful to use a reference for this process. When painting hair, one of the best references you can look at are the box fronts of hair dye. Now I'm mixing in a little brown to hit some of the shadowed areas. It's fine to go over some of the places we already painted with this. That'll actually help give the hair some volume. I'm just selectively putting this into some of the deeper recesses. I'm darkening it even further with the touch of black. I'm reserving this for the areas of hair I want to be darkest. And now I'm going and cleaning up some of the highlights. You can just continue going back and forth between these colors for a while, trying to build the volume of the hair until you get it to a place you like it. Or as so happens in many cases with me, until I get sick of it. That completes the red part of the hair. Now we'll move on to the white streak. I'm going to start off here by taking some stonewall gray and lightening it significantly with dead white. We don't want to go pure white quite yet, but we do want this to be pretty close. I'm spending much less time on this. Here I'm trying to keep to some of the sculpted details of the hair. I'm mixing in some black here to just darken it and hit some of the shadows. This can also help add some volume to that area of the hair. Then I decided to apply a black wash over that entire area. And while I have this out, I'm just going around to the rest of the hair, trying to emphasize some of the most shadowed areas, like under this area where she has her hair rolled up. We'll let you off the hook this time with the eyes. I'm going to paint them as if they're closed. For this, I'm mixing a tiny bit of Warlord purple into some black and just filling in her entire eye sockets with this. Looking at some of the artwork of Losa, she has very dark eyeshadow, so going very dark with this seems appropriate. It's fine if it's not perfect, we'll address it in the next step, which is highlighting the skin. To do this, we'll start by adding a touch of purple into the cadmium skin tone. And here I'm starting with her knees, applying the paint only to the upward facing areas. And also this blue streak where I screwed up. Now I'm going through and trying to pick out the areas of exposed skin on her legs. And here I'm hitting the tops of the shoulders. And finally moving on to the face. This is where we'll use this highlight color to clean up the eyeshadow that we did in the last step. Just paint around the outside and try to shape the eye the way you want it. We'll also be highlighting the typical areas of the face, like the forehead, cheekbones, nose, and chin.
And we also can't forget to highlight the hands. Normally you would avoid the separation between the fingers, but it's not well defined on this model, so we'll have to draw them in later manually. We'll continue the highlighting process by mixing in a little more cadmium skin. And we'll hit all those same areas, keeping the highlights a little bit more towards the top. Here you'll see me fiddle around a little trying to mix a color that I can use for the recesses of the fingers. Pretty much throwing in everything on the palette that's dark. We're looking for a very dark brown, but we still want a little bit of red in it so it has some life. And once we have it the way we want it, we're going to take a thin brush and try to brush in the space between the fingers. This can be pretty difficult for a beginner. So feel free to skip it if you don't feel comfortable. And here's my final result. I then go in off camera and clean up some of the messy parts with the skin tones that we've been using before finally adding some white and applying a final highlight to all the skin. For this next step, I'm going to boost the shadows across the entire miniature by watering down some black wash and applying it sparingly wherever I feel like the shadows need to be a little bit deeper. I also want to hit all of the leather and all the metal bits with this. We'll use this to darken some of the wraps on the legs and bring those highlights down more towards black. And here I'm boosting the shadows between the two layers of dress. And then emphasizing the shadows on some other portions of her outfit. Now we'll return to the base with some pure black and paint the top of the base. We're going to stay away from that white area for now though. For the white area, we're going to get a big brush and wipe off the excess. This is essentially a dry brush. And we'll paint over that entire white area. And what should happen is the paint will collect on the upper surfaces and leave the white recesses untouched. We're looking for this effect. For a final touch that you can consider optional, I want to paint her lips. This is just a mixture of some skin tone, some red, and some purple.
and this completes Losa. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, you know the drill. I'd appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to my channel, share, and leave a comment letting me know if there's anything you'd like to see me do next. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Board With Paint. Those can be good places to see previews of what I'm working on and get a hint for what's coming up next. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy painting.